Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level further maths. Here we we'll look at an introduction to summations. So we can answer questions from exercise 3a. So first of all, what is a summation and what is this funky new symbol that we've got on our screen here? So this symbol here, it's the Greek capital letter sigma. It's a shorthand notation for adding together lots of different values. And the way that you work out what values you're adding together is you substitute in the number of one in the first case here into your piece of algebra that you've got here. So the first term that we're going to be adding together is nine from 10 times one, take away the one will give you a nine. And then we work through all of the numbers up to the top number, continually substituting them in to wherever R is uh, in the piece of algebra that we've got next to our summation. So effectively, the bottom number on your sigma value here is your starting point of summating, and then your top number here is the last number that you substitute into the R value, and you work through all of the numbers in between 1 and 3, continually summating what you get once you've substituted into 10R minus 1. So in this case here, okay, so what we get here is 9 in the first case. Substituting in 2, you get 10 times 2 is 20. Take away the 1, you get 19. Substituting in 3, you get 30 minus 1 is 29. And then your target to then add them up, and you get 57. So that's how you work through a summation problem or evaluating a summation. You substitute in all of the numbers from 1 to 3, only the whole numbers, only integers, um, into your piece of algebra here, and then you sum up the answers to all of those uh, substitutions as you go along. So what about this one here? Well, the first value that we're going to substitute in is 2, so 2 squared is 4. The next number we'll substitute in is 3, so 3 squared is 9. Next number is 4, which is give you a 16. And the final number is 5 squared, which will give you um, a 25. So the sequence of numbers that we're going to summate here is the square numbers. We're going to first put 2 into the summation, work through the numbers 2 all the way up to 5, um, every integer in between. And then we're going to add them all up. So 4, 9, 16, 25, add them all up together and you get 54. So that's how we work with summation symbols. Now, just uh, a bit of an anomaly, this one here, well, not an anomaly, a uh, special case here. Um, if we're substituting in the numbers 1 uh, up to a certain value of n, then effectively there's nowhere, there's no r value, there's no, there's no r letter in this term here. So there's nowhere for us to substitute in the number that we're currently at. All we've got to do is just add together a bunch of 1s n times, because we're going from 1 up to n. So n lots of 1 will give you just n. Okay. So if this n number here was 7, you'd just add together 1 7 times, because there's no place to substitute in your r numbers that you get as you go through your series. Okay, now what we have here is a little formula that helps us add together the first set of natural numbers. So if you want to add together the first 10 numbers, you can use this formula here. So a half of 10 times uh, 11 will give you your answer to the summation of the first 10 numbers. We're going to prove this formula here later in the series of videos, um, just not now. Okay, this is a this is a formula that you can learn or memorize um, for your exam. So the summation of the first natural numbers, um, the reason that will give you just the natural numbers is because there's R here, there's nothing that's happening to R. As you work through the numbers that you need to sum eight, um, you're not going to be doing anything to those numbers, it's just going to be 1, add 2, add 3, add 4, add 5, add 6, until you get up to your upper bound number. Okay, so for example, if you wanted to add together the first five numbers, 
You could do this by either adding the first five numbers together, or you could substitute it into this formula here. Uh, half of 5 times 6, that's 30, half of it's 15, so you get 15 in both ways. And this will work for any number n that you choose. Okay, so these are two formulas that we're going to prove in chapter 8 later on, that the summation are from 1 to n of 1 is just n, and the summation from 1 to n of r is half n, n plus 1. So work out the sum of this uh, series here. So sum from 1 to 50 of r. That's effectively 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10 plus 11, all the way up to 50. So we can either do that or use the formula. It's much easier to use the formula here. Substitute in your n value as 50 and you get 1,275. Two different ways of writing this formula you can see here. You can either have the half factorised at the front or you can have it as a, a big fraction over 2. Exactly the same way of using the formula. Let's have a go at this one here now. So we're adding the numbers from 21 up to 60. And we're not doing anything to these numbers yet. It's just substitute them in and add them up. So in this case here, we're going to be adding together the list of numbers from 21 up to 60. Um, the difficult part is that our formula uh, only works from 1 up to your upper bound number. So from 1 up to 60, the formula would be good for. Um, but that would be adding together too many numbers. Um, when we use the formula and we substitute in 60, that would give us the answer of the summation from 1 to 60. And that's too many. What we want to do is then subtract... Um, the numbers that have been summated from 1 up to 20. The reason that we're not going to go up to 21 is because we want to include the number 21 in our summation. Um, so we want to then get rid of all of these numbers from here to here, from 20, from 1 up to 20, so that we're left with then the summation from 21 up to 60. So this summation here... Uh, the summation from 21 up to 60, if you add the numbers from 21 up to 60, another way of doing that is to summate the numbers from 1 up to 60 and then subtract the numbers from 1 up to 20. And that will leave you with the numbers from 21 up to 60. So notice here how 20 is always going to be 1 less than the series that you wet the at the position that you want to start your series at. Notice that the number here is always one less than the one at the start. So if you've got 21 here, you want to take away 20. The reason you don't take away 21 is because you want to include 21 in your summation. Okay, so now substitute these numbers into your formula and you get 1620. All right then, so that's how we can deal with a series of summations uh, where we start at a different number other than 1. Um, how do we add together a number or series that look like this then? That look like some number times r, the number that we're substituting in, add on a b, the way we don't know what that b is as well. So what we can do is we can separate our two series can effectively substitute out uh, the a here and we can factorize out the b here but split up the summations as well because we've got one formula for the series of r and one formula for the series of 1. Okay so the way, one of the ways that we can show this is if we do a real simple case of substituting in 1 up to 4 of a r plus b. Now, substituting in 1 first, we'll get a plus b. Substituting in 2 now, we're going to get 2a plus b. Substituting in 3 now, we're going to get 3a plus b. And substituting in 4, finally, we're going to get 4a plus b. 
Now what we can do here is we can group some of these terms together. We can group together a plus 2a plus 3a plus 4a. And we can add together the b's separately as well. b plus b plus b plus b. And we can also substitute out these um, out these a's. So now this would just be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. And substituting out the b's, we're just going to get 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. Factorising out the b's, I mean. So now, effectively, what we've got here is a times the series from 1 to 4 of these numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4. Substitute them in and add them together. Another way of writing that is with this symbol here. And we can also do that with b, factorised out, and then lots of ones. We want four ones being added up together. Uh, and another way of writing out is th with this symbol here. So you can see here how this would work with higher numbers, five, six, seven, eight, how you can split up series by factorizing out the numbers that are getting in your way and then split them up into summation um, formulas that you know how to work out or that we've got here. Let's go through an example then. So the series from 1 to n of 3r plus 2 can be split up into factorising out the 3 at the front times the series from 1 up to n of our r. So we'll use this formula now. And then next we factorise out the 2 and then we summate the series of 1 where we've got this formula that we can use. Okay. So now we want to um, write this series as a formula, or we can write it out like this. So substituting in 1 here, substituting in 2 here, substituting in 3 here, substituting in 4 here, and we can carry that on all the way up to n. Okay, so we're going to triple the number that we're substituting in, and then add on 2. You can see here that we're going to have three lots of our series being added up and a whole bunch of 2's being added up afterwards. So we can factorise out the 3 just like I showed you before. Factorise out the 2 and we can write it like that. Okay, So that's explaining how we can split up our series that looks like this into two separate series um, with integers as factors at the start. So evaluating this series here from 1 to 25 of 3r plus 1. Now first thing I would do here is split up this series into two separate series that we know how to summate. 3 times the series of r plus the series of 1's being added up together. Now we know the formula for the series of r, that's up here, and we know the formula for the series of 1's, which is also up here. Okay, so this here is just going to be 25. Substituting in n as 25, and we get 1000. Okay, so if you sum up the first 25 terms into the um, substitution of 3r plus 1, you get 1,000 as your final answer here. Okay, so another question they could ask you is to prove that the series from 1 to n of 7r minus 4 can be represented by this formula here, n over 2, 7n minus 1. So the first thing we do here is split it up, obviously. So split up your series. 7 can be brought out as a factor, and then it's the summation of r. Minus 4, brought out as a factor, times the summation of 1's. Now we've got a formula for the summation of r, so it's 7 times that formula, and then it subtracts 4 times the formula for the summation of 1's, so it's take away 4 times that formula, take away 4n. 
OK, so that's the answer, but it wants us to write out our final answer like this. So what I would do first is create common factors or common fraction denominators on both of my two terms here. So 8n over 2, and then what we can effectively then do is factorise out a half. Or we can do the subtraction on the, um, on the fraction here. Expand the brackets um, on the first part of the fraction and add together and we get 7n squared minus n. Factorise out the n and it looks pretty identical to what it wants us to get. n bracket 7n minus 1 over 2. Okay, these two expressions are equivalent. Okay, so using this uh, calculation here, we can now add up the substitution of 20 up to 50 into the algebraic expression of 7r minus 4. So that's 20 substituted in, 21 substituted in, 22 substituted in, adding up all those results up to 50. Now remember, if we are finding summation from 20 up to 50, then the way we would do that to use the formula is we must always start at 1, so it's from 1 up to 50, but then take away the summation from 1 up to 19 so that we leave 20 alone because we want to include it in our summation. So we're going to take away the substitutions from 1 up to 19 uh, from the substitutions of 1 up to 50, and that will just leave us with the substitutions of 20 up to 50. Now we can substitute 50 and 19 into our formula here. And just get your calculator out and find the final answer here. 8,725 minus 1,254, which will equal 7,471. So that's the answer to this question here then. All right, so your turn to have a go at these two questions here then. Pause the video and have a go at them. Right, OK, let's have a go at question 1e from exercise 3a. So this is the substitution from 10 up to 40 of just the series of integers. So what we're going to do here is start from 1 up to 40 of our series, and then we're going to subtract the substitution from 1 up to 9. Um, so effectively here I'm s summing up the numbers from 1 up to 40, but then I'm going to take away the summation from 1 up to 9 so that I'm left with the summation from 10 up to 40. So, substituting this into my formula, I've got 40 over 2 um, times 40 plus 1 and then subtract 9 over 2 times 9 plus 1. So this is going to be 20 times 41. So that's going to be... Um, 820, take away 9 times 5, so that's going to be take away 45, so this is going to be 775. So that's our final answer for question 1e. Question 8a is a little bit more of a tricky one here, so we want to show that the formula for, subbing, for summing up 3r plus 2s from 1 up to n is given by this formula here. So the first thing I would do here is split up my formula. So to sub, sub, um, factorize out 3 and then the summation from 1 up to n of r. So r here is the, the number that we're substituting all of our numbers into. And then factorize out a 2 and it's 1 going up to n starting from 1. OK, so uh, now we use our formulas. So it's 3 times the formula for the summation of R's. So it's n over 2 n plus 1 plus 2 lots of the formula for the summation of 1's, which is just n. Now we can group these together. So it's 3n over 2 n plus 1. And I want to create a common fraction with this 2 here, so what I'm going to use is 4n 
over 2. Now I'm going to try and do as much factorization as possible. Now I can see they've both got halves in, these two terms here and here. And I can also see they've both got n's in, so I'm going to factorize out the n from both of these terms as well. Now what do I have left? Well, I've got my 3. I've already factorized out the half, and I've already factorized out the n. So I've only got an n plus 1 left here. And from the second part of my expression here, um, I've not factorized out the 4 yet. I've factorized out the half, and I've factorized out the n, so that's fine. I'll leave that there. So it's half n, 3n plus 7 as the final answer there, which is exactly what I was looking for in my show that. So that's how we start us off with these summation questions here then. So we've got a way that we can sum up um, integer values. We've got a formula that we can do that with. And we can also split up slightly more complicated substitutions by splitting them up into two separate formulas and then using the formulas on them um, to come up with um, rules for other summations. Okay. So, uh, have plenty of practice on exos 3a. It's going to get a lot harder in exos 3b, so make sure you've had lots of practice on these. Um, pause the video and try lots out. Thanks very much for watching.